Hello, unprofessionals, and welcome to this week's episode. This is of just the two of us discussing imposter syndrome, field trips, and this week's episode is brought to you by gum wrappers. Sometimes they are thrown in the trash, sometimes they're left on the desk, and other times, now you can take the foil and somehow attach it to your back of your Chromebook. Don't quite understand how that works, but it's something the kids love doing these days, and we love the kids. All right, so thank you again, and enjoy this episode. It's okay ha, to be unprofessional. This is your teacher confessional. Real teachers' the stories are real. You gotta laugh with the disco and meal. <laughs> So, welcome, unprofessionals. This is our Just Us podcast, just me and Tedisco. And due to social distancing, we are not in the same room, but we are Google hanging out, as the kids say. And all the kids say that these days. And they're all Google hanging out now. You know what I mean? I mean, I think. The kids and your Google and your coronavirus and your billiards and your jazz. They're, I mean, they're probably Google dating, and we'll be going to the Google prom later. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> is it going to be a Google prom? They'll probably. Is that how we'll do? We'll have a social distance Google prom? It could be. This November, we have Google elections. We do. Yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for Disney. <laughs> so anyway, I did want to mention that we, we talked in the, the pre-show conference that we had uh, that we didn't want to get too focused on the whole Corona thing. We know it's like... 24 7 corona for all you guys or maybe not anymore if you're listening to this in the in the future 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 future. (laughs) i mean technically this is a recording so every person listening to this is hearing it in the future Mm -hmm. well if time travel has been ended in the future some people might have taken this podcast to the past wow (laughs) and really bored some people in the 1700s like, hey, what's it like in the future? Well, there's this thing called podcasts. Let me listen to have you listen to one about teachers telling stories. That's what, what you are, want to hear about the podcasts. <laughs> well, have you ever met a guy who just likes to hear the sound of his own voice? It's like millions of yes. those screaming into yes. a void. It's like Paul Revere, only you can hear it over and over again. <laughs> It's less Revere and more Rudd. It's more Paul Rudd. Oh my! They it's don't not know what great, Paul but Rudd like is. you know, it's entertaining. Yes. Yeah. First it. item on our agenda is we want to talk about imposter syndrome. Yes, and so definitely I go through imposter syndrome a lot. And honestly, at, at, without getting back into the corona, I'm guessing some of the people that are getting on the news talking have a little bit of imposter syndrome as well. And imposter syndrome, in case you don't know, which I'm, I don't know, is <laughs> when you feel like you are way too in charge for who you actually are. That's, I don't know if that's the textbook definition, but that's no, kind of... that's pretty solid. A lot of times this happens to me where I'm teaching and I go off on one of my just random tangents. I don't just do it here on the podcast. I do it in the classroom as well. And something gets mentioned, and I go off and I tell them a story about my childhood or something random that happened in a different class some other time. And I just get to the point where I'm just laughing, and they're laughing, and we're not talking about math at all. And I kind of like, oh, I'm in charge. I'm I'm the adult. We should talk about... This is my circus. These are my monkeys. (laughs) We should talk about... Math more. Let's go back to that problem that I was thinking about. So I think I that's know. why observations always terrified me when I first started teaching. Like they don't they don't scare me so much anymore. When I was first started teaching, I'm like God, I I hope they don't figure out that I'm really just an imbecile in a tie. <laughs> yeah, and, and so and your kids definitely figure it out quickly. Yeah, I mean, I try to teeter totter back and forth between you know that relationship and and 
have that camaraderie and then occasionally I have to break out um, mm-hmm. Mr. Authority and I have to, as one of my other uh, teachers said, I go into what he used to call my dad voice. And so it's like, I need you to sit down right <laughs> now. I need you to sit in your seat. And then just like, I and don't know. And then they cut you out and leave. Right. <laughs> So this kind of relates to a a little parenting tip. So my kids are um, 14 and 10 now. But a long time ago, I I used to work in a sheet metal shop. I've mentioned my heating and air days before. And I worked in a family business. Sheet metal. Yes. Sheet metal. Sheets of metal. It's, you know, and you would bend it and bang it together. And there's all these sorts of devices and machines that do it so that the air can go through it later to make somehow the more you describe it, the less interesting it becomes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, um, anyway, world of shit. It was, this was a family business that I worked at. So kind of like a little bit duck dynasty, a little bit pawn stars where there's just like this business going on, but there's these family personalities and I hope she never hears this, but there was a the, the daughter that worked there. George. Yes, named George. <laughs> she, we're in a meeting one time, who knows why, another point, even in heating and air, not just teaching, you have pointless meetings, so we're sitting Everything. there, so the bosses can tell us stuff that we already know or don't care about, and um, she was somewhere else, and she worked there, but she burst into the meeting And she was maybe like 24, 23, and she basically basically proceeds to cuss out for her 60-year-old father in front of everybody. Over, like, business stuff or over, like, Whatever had gotten her worked up that day because she was just a brat. And so (laughs) I had one young child at the time, and I was about to have another, and I vowed to myself, if my child ever is bratty, but it's hysterical, you know, like in a (laughs) sitcom kid kind of way, where they say something that is really, really funny, it legitimately is, I would turn myself around, I would pinch my leg really hard and bite my lip, And I would turn around and I would go into dad and go and say, young man or young lady, that is not the way you talk. And that is not the way behave. You need to go to your room. At which point, if they left, then I would just laugh and I would tell the story to other people. Everybody else. Right. You know, and sometimes they do things that are objectively funny. Right. And as well. And the students do as well. You're like, oh, that was hysterical. But we cannot devolve into just, like, you're going to constantly make jokes all the time, and I'm not going to have control of this class. So it is, it's 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 like surfing. You just kind of have to ride the wave of, of having fun, and then occasionally you fall off, but, you know... S- snap back to reality. Right. So Go what ahead. do you do... To sort of overcome that that imposter syndrome, like like when you start feeling like you're phony and and what you're doing is is disingenuous. Okay, well, I take the wisdom of um, oh good gravy, what is her name? April uh, April Ludgate on Parks and Rec, and she was talking to uh, Chris <laughs> Pratt because he was working in that's his Lo- character's name. Yes, uh, Andy, but he was there working in London for some charity organization. And he's like, I feel like I am a phony. So she said, let me tell you the secret. Everybody does. And then I realized that the teacher, the principal, the superintendent, the president of the United States, I think maybe, we're not going political, but most presidents of the United States, at some point, they're in a room alone by themselves. and like, oh my bleep. I'm in charge of all of this. And like, there's literally people in other countries who are shooting at each other because of something I said or did, or there's people's livelihoods that is, you know, 
the stock market just moved because I farted. You know what I mean? And so you have to Because we're all just big kids. We are. We, we are. really are. We some of really... us just wear it better. Right. And some of us are just more honest about that. But yeah. yeah. Do you have any um, thing you wanted to share about that or times you've gone through or, or how you've dealt with that? The entire first like two or three years teaching, I kept waiting for like a real adult to like knock <laughs> on my door and just say like, no, no, no. <laughs> No, it, you fooled us long enough. Here, let me lead you to the sandbox. Don't go into the deep end. Yeah, and like, uh, and just to be escorted out. And no, everybody kept kind of reminding me that I was the adult, and I was like, I, but I don't think I should be. Oh man, they're like, I, well, you are, and you're the best we got, so do it. And and I did. Yep, I think make one it. of the mo- most make af- it. the most afraid I was was that first block on that first day when all these people walk into the room and you're like uh, i am gonna uh, close the door and it's gonna be just me and them and i'm gonna say the things that i've planned on saying and see how it goes but the funny part is until three o'clock in the morning when i definitely should have been sleeping <laughs> oh that is a thing by the way i've never talked to a teacher who doesn't have these the um first like the preschool before school starts anxiety dreams like the week before the month before yes work mares yeah but the funny part is the institution and the conditioning of everything is that the kids are like oh there's an adult you know so i guess i should do what i do when adults in the room you know to some of them that's not good but for the most of them they just do what it do what it is because I do remember my first year, the one class had gotten, you know, pretty out of control to where it was like really, really difficult to get all of them to be quiet. I had a um, game I called it, uh, you know, I didn't say shut up, but it was basically, I call it shut up whack-a-mole, where you could get one area <laughs> of the class quiet and they're all ready right. to pay attention. And then right. you go over to the other area that's loud and you work on them, and they get, now you've got two areas quiet, but there's three or four areas, and you get, when the third one you're working on, the first one or the second one pops back up, and it's, it's just... So I was like, how am I going to give them the final exam and mm-hmm. have them be quiet? Yeah, that terrified me my first year, because they were... Uh, they, like, they weren't bad. I just, I couldn't control them. That's what it was. So, like, they didn't respect me at all. So we had, like, state tests. We have a proctor come in. Right, And he was an elderly gentleman, and they all just started cracking jokes, and I could do nothing but just sit there and feel awful. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad for that poor man. Yeah. He had volunteered his time to help these kids, and they are just being teenagers at him. But Ruthless. One of the teachers shared with me, and it actually worked. He said, don't worry about it. There's something magical about when that test hits their desk. Because they've been conditioned, because you know, in high school, they've had so many of these tests that when that thing hits their desk, they are like, oh, serious time. I focus on this. I don't do the other stuff that I normally do. And it all just worked out. So After the test is another matter. But yes, oh, yes. I agree. Oh, yeah, that's... That's, <laughs> that's a oh, whole other topic of conversation. Oh, oh it's, that's terrible. And it's the, the kids that finish it gra- grossly disparate times that there is only so long that that magic spell works because <laughs> if you've been done your test for a long time that was the other thing the teacher said to me don't pick up their test because this one is still paper test We're like leave that test on their desk so that the magic still <laughs> milk that minute for right, as long right. as you You're can like, I'm, I'm done that's okay just leave your test there because if that mm-hmm. I'm hoping that if the test was still there that they would be like oh okay i can't do anything yet because till this this is the serious thing that keeps me quiet so Mm -hmm. i don't know the worst is i'm sure you've experienced everybody's done except for that one kid and And i feel bad for that one kid too because like i think they're doing the perfect thing like this is yes no good job you take your time and yeah they're taking the test seriously they're double checking their answers and they're just getting the hairy air by all the hairy eyeball from everybody right because in my mind i'm thinking 
good job on you. But I'm sure all the kids are like, we're going to put soap bars and socks and whale on this kid in the parking lot. Yes. Here's the funny thing. Maybe not that nature kid. (laughs) Well, I do give that as... A uh, soap bar and a sock? No. I do give a little... okay. For my rougher classes, now you Mm -hmm. have to read the script. So I do this before it's script time, when people are sharpening their pencils, going to the bathroom, and all that. Right. I say, listen, and this is where I, the unprofessional part comes. Don't do, don't try this at home. I said, listen, if you are the reason, because if they do something bad, we all have to come back and take the test. Yep. I said, if you are the reason that we all have to come back on the day where you're planning on not coming in at all to retake the test because you did something that was not good, someone in this class will find you and beat you up. <laughs> you just go Liam Neeson on them? Uh, yes. If you disrupt my test, I will find you. And I will punch you. <laughs> and invariably, I told my wife that, and it varies on the on the climate of the class, but with some of the rougher classes I've had, I don't say, you actually say that? I'm like, the funny part is, in some of my rougher classes... I almost immediately get volunteers. Like they're like, "Yeah, you better not do anything. You've been quiet." <laughs> you know, and I'm like, "You're actually the one that I was worried about." But <laughs> glad I will you, beat him up. This is a verbal threat. Glad you are taking that demeanor now and understanding the seriousness of if, as if we have to come back. So. field trip stories no i've never been on a field trip i don't want to go on a field trip you've never been on well, i've never taken a field trip with students really i teach math <laughs> i mean yeah i guess so when am i gonna go on a field trip that we used to get for we used to get this mail or every year for some math play that they were trying to convince us that they were putting on that we should take our students to and I can never get the other math teachers to even consider for more than two seconds. And like, oh, when I can like get a bus and get approval and fill out paperwork and take a bunch of teenagers outside and keep track of them and all the drama and the challenges. Oh, that's the story. Ah, remember we said I had a funny story about a colleague of ours. It was yes, a field trip story. Ah, every once in a while, kids, the things like come around and all of a sudden my brain makes a connection. Every right. now and then it works. So I, it's not a field trip of mine, but so a teacher of ours, this is, and God bless the teachers that do this. He took, I don't know how many kids, 20, 40, 50, to New York City. Not oh, to, Lord. Yeah. I mean, we are not in New York. For the record, we're across the Mason-Dixon line. I mean, there's so many bad things that can happen. I mean, it can happen anywhere. But it just, it's intimidating taking kids to New York City. When Frank Sinatra said, it's a hell of a town, he was really underplaying it. Yeah, I mean. There's a lot to it. And I'm from New York. I love New York. No, I would never take a group of kids to New York City. So, I don't know what all the rules were with supervision and how they... You know, they were, they were following all the guidelines for sure as best as they could, but I guess there were times where the kids had some independent time. I don't know how it all happened. So mm. these kids, and here's a theme, kids don't know stuff. They just haven't experienced <laughs> it. So they don't know it. Things have been done for them, so they don't know it. Mm-hmm. So... These kids get back to the hotel from wherever they were. Uh-huh. And maybe the, maybe the adult brought them back to the hotel and was staying in a different part of the hotel. I don't know. They didn't have their hotel key. Now, you or I, we don't have our hotel key. Not a problem. What do you do, Mr. Tedesco? You go to the front desk. Yes, for another one. Right. What do these kids do? They go to the door and sit outside in the hall for hours. 
His jaw is on the floor. Why? I, I, oh. Right. Because they don't know. You know? And they're high school? High school kids. There's a, there's that fear of getting in trouble. Oh, should I tell someone? Yeah. No, I don't tell someone. I don't know. Maybe someone will come by and let us in. I, I have no idea the thought process. But, like, they just didn't. When you're, no. Did their brains just go to the blue screen of death where they just kind of <laughs> zonked out and just right. does not compute? Yes. Did they think, uh, hmm, no one will ever be able to open this door again <laughs> now that we've lost the one that the key to it? How God. will anyone ever rent this room again? <laughs> <It'll> <laughs> I'm be sure someone will have to come with like, room. yes, we must need a hammer and saw to, to chop the door down to get in here now that this key is <laughs> We have to call the electronic blacksmith. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the uh, story that I have about field trips. Do you have any field trip stories? I, I do. So, okay. Uh, I've taken a number of field trips and I've run a number of field trips, um, especially like in the middle school, not so much high school. Oh, and I have a field trip joke afterwards. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm already unhappy. <laughs> Just hearing that made me unhappy. Uh, so um, I, I ran a couple of field trips. Uh, one of them was uh, for our, our whole grade level. So I was an eighth grade teacher and we were going to take the whole eighth grade out to uh, a theme park near us. Um, and so nothing could go wrong there. Well, the thing is like it, with eighth grade, like there's the, the state test. So the, the way it was set up that year, at least there's a state test. And then we had like three weeks until the end of school. Oh, good. so the kids are done. Right. Right. And so crazy. there's no reason to behave. Yes. So we scheduled this like three days before the end of school. So it's like the end of school and then a day and then the graduation day. Because then you can lure that over them and say, if you don't behave, you're not going on this trip. Absolutely. Positive reinforcement, I nice. guess. So, uh, yes. Um, so for teachers out there, if you, if you have kids and you're not sure how to keep control of them for a short period of time, set up a, a, a trip or some sort of event. Yeah. So we, we set Delayed this up. Delayed gratification. Go ahead. Yes, and I was voluntold that I had to do this. So, uh, and and it's over a hundred kids. So it's organized that and, and and tons of money and and making sure I got all the buses and and everything and and uh, getting all the tickets and and organizing all of it, making sure I got enough chaperones and, and things actually worked out really well. People helped. All right, if you ever have to organize a field trip, don't be afraid to ask for help. People want to help. Mm -hmm. um, I got it all organized after several anxiety attacks. And uh, the field trip went, right? And so I am the head of the field trip. I'm the point person. I got all the paperwork and everything. I got the contacts to the school. So we go there. It's June. It's a nice sunny day. I got um, like uh, my, my cargo shorts, right? My sandals. And uh, we're going around in like the different uh, uh, roller coasters and whatnot. I and hope you're wearing some coaster. nerdy t-shirt. Were you wearing a nerdy t-shirt? Oh, probably. <laughs> but I couldn't tell you what it was. Okay. Probably a Mortal Kombat. Okay. I I have like an original Mortal Kombat shirt. Anyway, oh, so right. uh, I get on this roller coaster, right? And it, it's one of the ones where like it you hang and like it flips you upside down and whatnot. Nice. And then I get off and I realize my cell phone's gone. <laughs> it fell off, and I'm like, "All right, well, let's check down below." And we look down below, and the roller coaster is over a pond. Nice. Oh. Wow. So that cell phone is. God. Oh. There is no find your phone it's for the bottom to... of the ocean. So now it's time. Like... To... So you go somewhere and change your diaper after that, right? <laughs> uh, oh, depends. I need to go on a water um, ride because I just soiled myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, just give me give me about 10 minutes. So I have to borrow somebody else's cell phone. That doesn't and have all luckily, the contacts in that you have. No, absolutely not. And all the paperwork <laughs> says, call my cell phone. Oh. So I have to call my vice principal, who's back at the school, wow. uh, and tell him, hey, uh, could you text the entire phone list <laughs> <laughs> and uh, give him your phone number? Wow. 
And luckily they helped me out. But yeah, after like a whole month of a month, like two months of nothing but stress, I'm like, I can finally relax. I right. got here. Nope. <sighs> oh, oh, my heart. It just it hurts. Yeah, just that's I'm, I am. My tummy is upset just thinking about it. But. but we found everybody. We got everybody back on the buses. Everyone was OK. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And that's what they told me about the field trip. The only thing that matters is the same number of kids who get on the bus. That's get true. Off of it. That's true. It really, it really is. Yes. So, so you knew what right. to do. You could have just stared at the pond waiting. Yes. I, what I meant to say is I sat down in a hallway and just <laughs> waited. I put a paper bag over my head for effect. <laughs> Said, I sat in a corner there, and I thought about what I had done. There is no obvious next step <laughs> to me. I give up and sit down. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, I'm, I think I think we've I'm got. I'm upset to ask this question. What's that? Oh, my funny story. Oh, this is good to take two seconds. Joke? Oh, okay, my field trip joke. So this comes from another teacher who gave it to me. This is just a good student prank. All right. So I will say to the kids. Hey, kids, we're going on a field trip. You beat the kids. You're the kids. Wow, now. really? Where? Worksheet City. And then I just hand out a worksheet. <laughs> You're a oh. bad person. <laughs> they don't think it's funny at all. I think it's hysterical. <laughs> I know you think it's hysterical. <laughs> all right, well, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Not that you really had much else to do right now, uh, but make sure you like us, subscribe to us, um, send us an email, uh, professionaldevelopmentcast at gmail.com. Send us your funny stories, and we will be happy to read them online and, and send us uh, any questions that you want us to answer or things you want us to tackle. And, uh, oh, follow us on Twitter. What's our yes. Twitter handle? At thing? Unprocast. At Unprocast. Yes. So for all you twits, uh, get on that one. Yeah. Thank you so much and stay unprofessional. <laughs> 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 <laughs>